Iron is the 26th element on the periodic table. It is many people's favorite element. It is many, many people's favorite element because society as we know it wouldn't exist without iron. Iron has very good tensile strength, compression strength, and toughness. It is very abundant and very cheap. You might hear of a metal or alloy that has very good toughness, compression strength, tensile strength, lightness, cheapness, or many other attributes. But those alloys or metals are all compared to iron. Later on, people, people discovered that they could add other metals to the steel, such as vanadium, nickel, chromium, zinc, copper, and many others, to improve the other attributes of the steel. Very recently, people discovered that if you add a mixture of chromium and nickel to the steel, it becomes extremely corrosion resistant. This is known as stainless steel. I'll show you some regular steel. Here we go. This is some regular steel. And as you can see, it is rust as a, rusted as heck. And on the body of the iron, you get a, this layer of iron oxide. Now, iron oxide will peel off and expose the iron underneath to atmospheric oxygen and water, and that will form a new layer which will continually pe peel off. And it is estimated that this is the single most destructive unwanted chemical reaction in the world. It must have been pretty amazing when you take that rusty old hulk over there and turn it into something that would never rust, like this. Since that time, people have been experimenting day and night trying to find even better steels. There are thousands of different kinds of steels today. Steels for high temperature. Steels that, can, that have extreme tensile strength. Steels that, have very, that are pretty light. The base of all these different kinds of steels is iron. There's another very important thing about iron. It is magnetic. Specifically, it is ferromagnetic. Now, in the simplest possible terms, something that is diamagnetic is, re is repelled by any magnetic field. Something that is paramagnetic is attracted by any magnetic field. And something that is ferromagnetic is attracted by any magnetic field, but also, in the presence of a magnetic field, it can be turned into a magnet itself. That is why refrigerator magnets are made of primarily iron. The strongest permanent magnet is actually a mixture of neodymium and iron. Now, because there's precious little to say about neodymium, I'm going to save talk about that for the neodymium video. Okay, so you probably don't think of iron as being flammable. But almost anything, if you have a big enough surface area on it to expose it to atmospheric oxygen, it will become flammable, or at least somewhat burnable. So here I have steel wool, which is primarily iron. And it actually has some carbon in it because it's steel, and that'll actually help it burning. So I'm going to fluff this up to give it surface area, more surface area. You can see because this is uh, steel wool, it's got a huge amount of surface area that is exposed to atmospheric oxygen. So as I said before, this will make it much more flammable. So. Theoretically, at least, I could just light it with a match. Let's see if that'll work. Yep, and it does work. It's burning. And, of course, because it's iron, it'll make iron oxide when it burns. Something I forgot to mention a few days ago when I was filming the previous clips is that iron determines the lifespan of very large stars. 
here's what happens. In stars like the sun, you have hydrogen fusing into helium and helium fusing into heavier elements, and this generates the power that runs the star, basically. That it's, it's the force that counteracts gravity pulling the star inward. Now, with stars like the sun, the star isn't hot enough to continue fusion past elements like oxygen, because the heavier the element you're fusing, the more heat it takes to fuse it. So, at about oxygen, the sun can't keep fusing, and it can't counteract the pull of gravity, so it'll collapse in on itself and die. But with heavier stars, they could keep fusing well past oxygen, and they could keep fusing well past iron, except for this thing. As you fuse heavier and heavier elements, the amount of energy that you get out gets smaller and smaller. So you're gonna get a very large amount of energy from fusing hydrogen into helium, and, and smaller and smaller amounts of energy as you go up. And uh, first of all, the reason you get energy out of fusion is that um, as you fuse the two atoms, or more than two atoms, there is a very small amount of mass that is lost in this process, and the small amount of mass that is lost is, conver is converted into pure energy. And as you know from the equation E equals mc squared, a tiny bit of mass equals a huge amount of energy. So even this tiny amount of mass that is lost equals a huge amount of energy. Um, now, at iron, you, uh, it takes more energy put in than the energy you get out. So at iron, fusion actually takes up, uses up energy. And even stars that are hot enough to fuse well past iron can't because they, they're, it's using up energy, not giving out energy, and they'll collapse in on themselves because of gravity. So, where do all the elements past iron come from? Well, for that, you're going to have to wait for the cobalt video, the first element past iron.